Okay, this is part two. I'm sorry. I had to like stop my camera did something about like saying that I reached a certain type of thing. Anyways, I'm continuing on. So when I had this enlightened stage thing happening to me, what ended up happening was that I felt oh, well, like I felt like as if for the like the next two to three weeks, I had all this like energy, this like I started feeling energy around me. I started realizing I'm an empath. I started realizing where I came from, from this universe to come boom for a reason, for a mission. I felt like things happened to me. I felt like other things going on. Woo, as you can tell these lights are coming in and out. Like I had these other like just knowings of life. I've had these things of like knowing about these beings that are around us that are like loving us, but they can't like, show themselves because maybe we're not ready. And that's why about, you know, aliens and all this crazy stuff, which I'll like to talk about another time. But this is another important thing. Part of this happening that like I started appreciating things like when it comes to flowers, like example, you see a flower, right? You love a flower, so you think it's beautiful, so you pick it up. But then technically you don't really realize that the flower is now going to die because you picked it up. So if you truly love something, you truly love it, just appreciate it as it is you know, in the earth, in the ground, because as soon as you pick it up, it's going to cease to exist of whatever you meant it truly was to begin with, you know, which is something beautiful. So it's like you just leave it there. Just appreciate and value it there. Now, I'm sorry for all the people that love flowers. I'm not saying you can't have flowers and appreciate it that way. I'm sorry if I offended you. But it was just one of those things. I started to just have these. I'm just trying to show you like how kind of love I had. And I just appreciated things of life. Like as if it was like the first time I experienced moments of life. It was like the first fucking time of everything. And like, I felt like I was a new person, like something like I was just in a new body. Like I was just, everything felt different. Like I felt it was me, but then not me. I started understanding about like just other things as spiritual awakenings of life, about um, just other things. And just to kind of give you an example, like I had this thing where in California, it was going through this uh, ashy type of uh, moments of life where, um, ashy most life, sorry, a lot of fires. So there's been like a little bit of ash in the air. Now, Oh, whew. I'm going to tell you this part. I never told anyone. <sighs> okay. So I was in the car. Car was covered. It wasn't like a Jeep, right? It wasn't a convertible. So I'm like sitting in my wife's car. We were driving and I had this thought of this thing of like, boom, of Jesus again. Just something happened. I wasn't just, you know, I'm not a church person. It was like a boom moment. Like I was kind of like all of a sudden, like I wasn't in the car. Like I was in the car, but my mind wasn't there. It's like as if you were focusing on something else and you're completely oblivious of what's going on, right? Someone could be poking you, talking to you, hey, Ray, 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 but you have no idea what's going on, right? I, and then I see my wife like kind of snapped me out of it. I was like, oh my God, what's going on? And then it's like, Ray, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. I had this weird Jesus moment. And then I looked at my hands. Both of my hands had black spot here, black spot there on my other hand now it was ash i know it was ash because of what was going on in california from the fires so there i know it was ash but it wasn't like i was sticking my hand out the window trying to get ash or whatever it was it was just all of a sudden it was already in my hand and it was two perfect circles in my hand and then i had to realize what that was and i knew that was something what people call a stigmata yes Obviously, I know it wasn't like the blood coming out or anything like that of like, you no know, actual nails being stuck on my hands. But obviously, you can tell where that was coming from. And all of a sudden, and when I had that moment and like thinking of the whole Jesus thing and having that in my hands, yes, that's what was going on. I'm like, that was my proof. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I showed my wife. She was like, holy crap. She almost got into an accident. She's like, you got to be kidding me like right now like what's going on ray she knows i wasn't trying to do anything i didn't purposely put anything in my hands i wasn't doing anything on purpose you know my hands were already clenched and then i opened them up i'm like what the fuck's going on what's going on everything was clean except for everything was clean except for the two circles two dots one on my hand one on the other hand right one of the palms i we ended up i wasn't the type of person that got into psychics or anything like that when you guys heard me when I talked about picking a psychic, this was like one of those moments where I had to go to try to figure out what the was going on. I had these visions of being a shaman. I started like diving into like uh, Sandra Ingerman about about shamanic practicing and whatnot. Something told me, called me to like some native back in my Native American roots that my ancestors were telling me. Also, even my my Dutch roots as well. And of course my Japanese roots mainly, you know, to kind of like go in touch with these things. You have to get in touch. Like we're, I realize our bloodlines are very thick. Like it doesn't matter what percentage you really are. If the, what, if it quote unquote matters is just the blood itself, you know, like that, that matters. 
that is still inside you. Those ancestors are still trying to talk to you. They're still trying to like mingle with you, try to let you know appreciation of what you what you came from and why you're feeling these things and that you're able to get in touch with these things regardless of like technology and everything that's coming to your life right now. Like get in touch. Like something tell me body, mind, and soul. Like this is one of those things that that you have to kind of go back to the basic roots. You have to get back in touch with your roots. This is what's going to help you. You came here for many reasons. One of the, I mean, one of like, like many reasons. One of them is to make sure that I'm here for my kids and for my brothers and sisters' kids to make sure that because they're being young are going to be going through this at a younger stage and they need to know what's going on so that when things happen, when certain beings or whatever you want to call it come visit us and other things happen, that they need to be ready. Whatever that's going to mean to you, that's I can't tell you, but they need to be ready and that someone like me, someone who never believed in any of this stuff, is that it's real and that this is something that they like I need to help them out only if they ask and only when I feel like they're of age I'm not gonna like force these things upon them because obviously it's sounds weird to a lot of people I've had these other things that happened to me that I was able to feel a Reiki energies I was able to kind of push energies away I almost had like an act we almost my wife and I had a lot of many like close calls before we saw our family and there's times where I had like I knew we were protected by angels whatever you want to call it, Buddhist deities or any other deities in life that just like, just, oh, just that kind of saved us. And it, I had realizations of like my spirit guides. Like you have to realize there's other things that have happened to me regards to like ants, spiders, to like hawks, to other things in life. I like to realize why I kept seeing this, like why I kept seeing these animals, why I kept seeing this. And I start to realize when I started feeling them, their vibrations before I had my spiritual awakening, even afterwards, start to know that I'm like able to somehow communicate with them vibrationally, with other things vibrationally, to know that I can actually start seeing vibrations off of things that are inanimate objects, to be able to know that there's everything is on vibration. It's kind of a weird thing. It's not like you see it immediately, but it's one of those you focus, you know, slightly off and then you can kind of start seeing things more. It's the same thing how you see these vibrational outline people, you know, the same, same difference. You know, I started to believe in other things, started going to shamanic journeying, started having other things happen to me, all the stuff you guys already know. And I will definitely go now in, you know, in detail, like uh, later on, as I start doing my videos of certain things that happen, I can always, you know, note these as, you know, part of my spiritual awakening experiences or, you know, cosmic ray experience or whatever you want to call it. But that was these things where I... Every day now, I still pray for Jamel Robertson. And if it wasn't for Jamel Robertson and my best friend's little brother, I feel that like some of this stuff probably would not have been possible, you know. And this person, both these people are beautiful people. Thank God, I can actually say that now. Thank God, one of them's still alive. And we're waiting for you to wake up, man. I said my story, you have to wake up now so you can tell yours, so you can share it together. Because you know this is going to be one crazy goony adventure when you wake up. Whew. So, I love you, man. And for all you cosmic surfers out there, thank you for allowing me to share my experience with you. And if I can be able to tie this video to the other video, to, and it's going to be one long video, hopefully that will work. But I think this is like the closest thing I can get to to making this short of a video of talking about my cosmic ray, you know, experience and or for me to be able to say that this happened with my, with, with me regarding like my spiritual awakening. There's other things that happened, but I kind of like dabbled with that within my past stories, you know, of cosmic ray of about my other previous videos of what happened in my life and kind of getting close to my spiritual awakening story, but never really got to it. When I started hearing that people kept leaving stuff out like that, I was like, what the heck's going on? Now I've had even, now I've said that, and puzzle piece some of the other stories I've said really quick, maybe kind of dabble, you know, follow along with some of the dabbling here. Um, when I was told you about the story of that, and I was talking to someone of like a Christian, you know, faith, you know, she was telling me how this is one of those things where not a lot of people feel, you know, Ray, um, about what's going on, you know, about life. That some of these Christian people that, um, they kind of long for, for this moment. And then, and I told her, like, I feel like it had to be me because I was the one that wasn't a true believer. You know, I, I had thoughts of like, you know, I can only, I was just like everyone else. I can only touch 
taste, see, smell, and hear. Everything else is just bullshit, you know, or at least what I thought at the time, right? If you start talking about fairies and talking about mystical beings and all this stuff, I'm like, you guys, I want what you guys have. Like, that's some good shit you must have. <laughs> and you're not thinking any of it's real, you know, because like, like I said, touch, taste, t see, smell, and hear. Like, oh, are mediums real? Or this real? And I realize I can communicate with them. And I realize I've been able to do a lot of things that the things I saw when I was young were real. All this is real. All the other people's, the majority of the, the major religions are real. You know, it was just the fact that everyone has this thing of, and I can't tell you what it is, but let me just share that they're all real. We all just have different experiences of what this oneness is. They were all together. And we all come from different countries, different aspects, so we can come together and share. We're all somewhat right in a sense, you know, it, it, just how we get there. And it's just, if we can just get rid of this control, like it has to be this one, it has to be my religion, it has to be mine. If we just get rid of that, we can all maybe find this oneness we've been longing for all of our lives. And to be able to realize maybe that's why other beings haven't quote unquote presented themselves. Maybe we got into a world that they had to leave. They had to say goodbye because they've realized it wasn't their time anymore. Now they have to, we have to will them in. We have to, you know, W, you know, I, L, L. We have to will them in here. We have to be able to let them know. And it's like, not just when people say seeing is believing, it's believing is seeing. You have to have this belief and then you can see. It's not like you can see first. It's like, oh, you have to prove to me first. No. Why don't you put that faith out there? Why don't you put that heart and soul out there? You know, I have my faith in you that you can't see, but I have it there. I don't know who you are that's watching, but I have faith in you. You may not have faith in fate, but my boy fate has faith in you, which I have faith in you. I know as Cosmic Surfers, if you're watching this, something has happened in your life. Whether you can or cannot explain it, whether it is spiritual awakening or it's not, or something else, being your third eye opening, Kundalini awakening, realization of enlightenment or re-realization of enlightenment, you know, or whatever this is. I, I know that I was I had came come back or I came down here for a reason. Something woke into me and, and like I realized, wait a minute, I've been now activated. I realized there was a purpose why I came here. I know the first time was to have fun, but the other time was for a reason. Okay. And there's gonna be people that are telling you, no, you came to this lurf to have fun. That's okay too. I said that too. Because not everyone is has the same journey. And I realize that too. Not everyone has the same journey. It took me a while. I was like, well, no, everyone wants this. Everyone wants this lifestyle of you know being rich and famous and blah, 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 and do this and have all this wealth. And everyone wants that. And everyone has this thing. Because that's what society kind of tells you to make you believe in this bullshit. And it's not that. After my awakening, I realized so many things about my life. And I'm like, crap, you know, I guess maybe I, I appreciated things, but maybe it was to a different level or a different degree. And started having these different experiences in my life and whoo I just know I'm the better for it you know and doesn't mean and I stopped the reason I talked about the whole weed thing earlier I stopped smoking I've stopped smoking and even if it was recreation just for fun or just for because I needed to lose some edge and this has no dig on you trust me it all has a purpose. It all has a place. And everyone has their own journey of life. And if it helps you medically, please, please use it when you need it. It was just for me, I can say that there's a point that when I did need it, and then when I didn't need it, and I still used it. And it was one of those, yeah, sure, it doesn't harm anyone. But then when you start doing it so much that you just did it because you, it was just a day that you woke up, you know, that you need it, you know, and it felt like, that could be doing other things, you know, and just use it when I did need it, you know, or if I needed to go deep in my shamanic journey or something, but I, I don't even do that anymore. I don't drink anymore. And trust me, I did enough partying for many generations and many lifetimes. And, you know, I am 37 years old or yeah, I'm going to be 38. So, and, you know, I look the way I do as an indigo child, as an indigo star seed, as a Hyokan empath, we kind of look young. And I realized that too, that, that there was a reason why I look the way I do. And I thought it was just led up to good genes and people could say that, but just trust me on this one. As someone that works in retail that sees people's ID all the time, I see people that look like way, way, way older than me. Like they're like, you know, they've had like in their like fifties or something and they're like younger than I am. I'm like, there's no way, like what the hell happened? And you know, I love them and that's okay. Everyone has their own experiences. Everyone has their own journeys, but I realize there's certain things that why I had to be young so I can help the youth in my time, that I can help them as well. And 
You know, I understand what about the Hyoka Empath. I understand all these other things about the hero's journey, about the wizard journey, about being a magician, being an alchemist, about being in all these other things, a multidimensional being, about parallel lives, parallel realities, knowing how to quantum jump, knowing that I have jumped, knowing I am a time traveler in a sense. And I know I've realized I've been different. My future is my past, my past is my future kind of thing, you know, depending on how you look at what a light year is, you know, and that you traveled so far away. To even try to find your loved one of the lost, you know, people call twin flame and to realize that it's not cracked up as to be, even though you met them on one lifetime and you thought it would be the same in this lifetime and it doesn't always work out, guys. It does not always work out. So just know that everyone, even that twin flame has, you know, their journey to go through. Everyone's got their own journey of life and you know, how this works out. No one's is better and no one's whatever to anyone's, okay? We all just going through it. I wanted to share these videos with everyone, with the collective, just to let you guys know this ish is real. This is stuff that's happening. You know, I always thought this was BS. I totally thought this was all BS for other people. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, there's no way like this stuff is real. And of course, it had to happen to me. I didn't take hallucinogenic drugs when that happened. I was completely sober when I was about to, I was going to, I was going to smoke. And then when I read that story, I started crying emotionally. I went in the bathroom and all that stuff happened. And afterwards it was like, and it was, and there were certain things I sacrificed, not like, you know, Jesus, but I gave up a lot of things. I started changing my diet. I, you know, like I said, I don't smoke. I don't drink anymore. You know, even Japanese, you know, I don't drink sake. Um, in New Year's, I didn't even drink champagne. Um, I don't drink wine anymore. I used to be a huge wine connoisseur, a, an avid beer drinker of loving different kinds of beers and appreciating beer, not just drinking it to get drunk, but appreciating it, you know, um, pairing it with foods, um, even sake. Um, you know, all my family and friends know that. They always give me wine and things have to do with wine and beer and not as in like an alcoholic person, but you know, I eat very good. And you have to keep in mind as an Asian person also, um, I get red when I drink. So it's as, as if you're hanging upside down and being drunk for a while. All that blood rushes to your head, but you're standing straight up. All the, the you know, from you have to go pee, always flushes out of me really quick. I'd be super drunk for about 30 minutes and then I can't be drunk anymore afterwards. But I would go pee like a racehorse all the time. And and there was times that I've had that. I had like other experiences of life I can share this with you. Now I've realized everything that's been going on with me you know, in my life. I can give you past experiences when I hang out with my friends, going to clubs and all these things. I started realizing what's going on. Why is this way? Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? Um, you know, like I said, I don't drink, don't smoke. And that's okay if you do. No, this isn't, like I said, this isn't a dig. You don't have to have this. I'm just telling you what has happened to me. I don't, I love grapes. None of my family members realize this, or I mean, they don't understand this actually. I had these visions of Samson and about um, about just even Zenastrianism and even with um, about the Jesus Christ, uh, about the Lazarus, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Lazarines and, um, and whatnot. Sorry, I know I'm not saying that correctly. I, my mind's racing right now. Um, but um, about like there's three things about not cutting their hair, you know, giving up alcohol, you know, and... Oh gosh, right now, sorry. Um, I know there's, I think there's like three things I believe that they're, they have to kind of follow, you know, for, for specific like rules and guidance. But it was, and not drink, you know, drinking from the vine was one of them. And I stopped having, you know, eating grapes. I was a total potato and chicken potatoes person, total chicken potatoes person all the time, every day, all day, every day. And I changed my diet, so I'm a vegetarian. I'm pretty much a borderline vegan. I don't, I don't like these labels, so I always say I'm like the horrible vegan because, you know, when I I see cake or something that someone made, I try to be nice and eat it, and I forget. Oh, wait a minute, egg, milk. Oh crap, I didn't think about it. And as all I drink is almond milk, I eat vegetables nonstop. You know, everyone's like, oh my god, this something must happen to you because that's all you eat now. That's no way, you know. And you know, I. Yeah, like I don't eat meat, you know, maybe like Boca burgers or something, you know, you know, other, you know, type of proteins and whatnots I eat in my life. And, you know, I started to have like, I taken like Shilajit, um, this like stuff that's from the earth and it's like this black liquid stuff I'll take sometimes even take like 100% raw cacao powder, like organic raw cacao powder, you know, take some of that to help stimulate my third eye. Start having like, you know, instead of peanut butter, I'll start having like almond butter and start having like you know, organic, you know, almond butter. And I started changing like my diet. I started changing all this stuff. I don't have any stomach problems anymore. Like I cured myself of like most things, you know, of, or at least <clears throat> for the most part, like I didn't have, I, my depression pretty much stopped. 
and my anxiety stopped. I had health problems no more. Um, I found like a new high of, of life. It just like just breathing, not like constant breathing, <laughs> trying to get high, but just like, you know, just I found appreciation of earth, uh, of like just being around my kids, of appreciating the moment, being high as in like just having fun, just enjoying life, finding a new sense of purpose. I've had moments in my life where I wanted to end my life, you know, before of other people even being right in front of me, telling me to end my life, right? Who fucking does that? Anyways, I'm not with them or going to be with them anymore. As you know, I'm sure I can already understand what that might be. But anyways, of any of other things, and it's like, why would you want to do that, right? And I started to realize, okay, I get it now. I get it. And then I had other thoughts of life and contradictions of like Bible things. And I, re you know, had that realization when I talked to the source, you know, like straight up at that time when I was literally I felt like I was in the same room with source and angels and whatnot and saying who I was and who I truly was and why I came here. And I realized who I am. I realized who I am. And, you know, like I always said, you guys don't have to believe me. You don't have to. You can just chalk this up to some guy that's just telling you a story. But I, I tell you my truths. I tell you because you guys are cosmic surfers. You guys are going through this. And who knows? You guys may have had the same exact experience. And I know I have a different purpose. And regardless if it's, you know, not what I may want it to be, you know, in life. I just have a new appreciation of people that are homeless. Appreciation for them. Appreciation for people that walk this life. Appreciation for love. Gratitude of life. Gratitude of just being here. Be able to, I can just sit in this room, share this experience, this moment of life with you. I'm just grateful for you just taking the time to watch this. Or maybe, I don't know if this is going to be one video or two videos or however long I end up putting this to be. I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Cosmic Surfers. Thank you, thank you, thank you for just allowing me to share this experience with you. And, you know, for all those, you know, who are watching this, maybe later down the years, you know, if they're my family members or not, you don't know I'm even doing videos. And for my true friends that do know I'm doing videos, thank you. And thank you for never, ever have judging me, ever, when I told you what had happened to me. Because you guys are true friends. When you realize in life, you know, all of the other BS friends, regardless of what you have on social media or what not social media, people you knew from the past, your true friends are the ones that stays. Other people are just other people. You know, and I realize with my friends who are in past, they don't even know it, and I can't even tell them. They have to go through their own journey to find that out. I can't tell them that I've known them in past lives. <sighs> Maybe I just did. <laughs> I can't tell them what kind of relationship I had with them in their past lives. Maybe why that's they felt the way they do now with me, not knowing what it was or what it is as this connection. You know, But we're all connected. We're all, all of us are. You cosmic surfers and I are connected. Whether or not it's a different lifetime or what, past lives, parallel realities, whatever it is, we're probably connected. And more than likely, I, I'm already feeling you. So just, you know, I don't want to create, you know, things for people to go quote unquote crazy, you know, and whatnot. And to make them feel like, oh, well, I know this person and this person. But just just know we're all, we're all, we're all special. Okay, that's my message as well, is that we're all special. I know it's one of those things where, well, if we're all special, no one's special. No, 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 no. We are all special. We are all connected, some ways, some form, to source energy, to our higher selves, whatever you want to call it, to even the parallel lives, the multidimensional lives. All this is connected. We may be connected from the future, from our past, from different moments of life. We all may have even been related somehow, but we are all one with our source, and as I am with you, Namaste. All you cosmic surfers, if I share more of what happened, I will. I just know this is real. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Universe, I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. And thank you for giving me the strength. And please wake up, my friend. Please wake up, my other brother my past life for my brother please wake him up he needs to be he needs to he needs to wake up please wake him up all right cosmic surfers good night and thank you